So then my friends, just like any other JavaScript framework, Quick allows us to easily work with component states. Now, if you've ever used something like React or Vue.js before, then you're going to feel right at home using states in Quick. But for those of you that aren't sure what state is, it's basically a way to keep track of either global values or component specific values. These state values are basically like special variables that can change over time or in reaction to something. And then the framework can react to those changes by re-rendering parts of the DOM if it needs to, or running some other code in reaction to the change. For example, you might have some global state to track the user authentication status. Now that might switch between being the user themselves when they're logged in or null if they're not logged in. Now when that state value is the user when they're logged in, we might show certain things on the website to the user, such as their avatar, their email address, etc. Now when the state value is null, meaning they're logged out, then we might hide certain things from the user. Or you might have some local component state to keep track of a list of to-dos on a specific page. And then Quick can re-render parts of the page whenever those to-dos change to reflect that state change. So that's what state is in a nutshell. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works with Quick applications. So let's open up the index page over here and we're gonna play around with using state inside this component. So the way we create a bit of state using a simple value like a string or a number is by using a hook called use signal. And that looks like this, use signal, click on this to import it up here from quick. And then we pass in an initial value. For example, that could be a name Mario. Now we're gonna store what this returns inside a constant. So let's say const name is equal to use signal and the initial value is Mario. Now this can change over time and it would update the value of the name. However, before we do that, let me show you how to output this in the template. So I could do a P tag right here and then I could say hello. And then to output some kind of variable or a piece of state, I would use curly braces and then name, which is this thing right here, then dot value to get the value of that signal, this thing right here, that piece of state. And that's gonna be Mario. So if I save it and refresh over here, we can see hello Mario, awesome. Now, this thing right here, use signal, this is good for simple primitive data. So strings, booleans, numbers, etc. But if you wanted to use an object or an array, then I would use instead use store. And I'll explain why later. For now, let's use the use store hook. So I'm going to say const person is equal to use store like so. And that needs to be imported from quick as well up here, use store. And then as an initial value will be an object. And that object is going to have a name property, which is going to be peach and also an age property, which can be 30. So essentially we just have multiple signals here. Use signal is just one single value, whereas use store is basically an object with multiple different properties or values, and it can track both of those values. So let's output them first of all. I'm gonna do another P tag and I will say hello, and then output person. And then this time we don't have to say dot value as we did here when we use use signal, Instead, we say dot and then whatever property we want to output. So for example, person dot name, like so. If I save it, we can see, hello, Peach. I can also output the age. So I'll do a dash and then curly braces again, person dot age and save that. And we should see 30 as well, which we do. Awesome. So that's how we create the state and use it down here in the template. Now then. What I'd like to do is show you quickly how to update this state. And to do that, we're going to have to dive into event listeners a little bit, but I don't want you to focus too much on these event listeners because we're going to go over those in probably the next video. So instead, what I'm going to do is just paste this in and you can see we do have click events associated with these particular buttons right here. So when we click this button, it's going to basically update the name value over here. So to do that, we say name and then dot value is equal to something else. That's all we do to update the value of use signal. Now for the store, we can say person dot name is equal to Bowser. So we don't need dot value again, we just need the property right here. So if I save this, I'm gonna come over here and we can see click me and that changes this to Luigi, click me again and it changes this to Bowser. So that's how easy it is to update the state as well. And when it updates, that update is reflected in the template, okay? I don't know why this is giving me an error, by the way. Um, ignore that for now. So um, that's how we update the state. Now I did say, if you're gonna use an object, then use use store. And the reason for that is 
if I copy this, right? And in fact, no, if I just say use signal right here instead of use store, then it would be person.value.name, right? That's how we'd output it because when we use use signal, we have to say dot value after whatever we call this constant and then it would be dot name. Same for this person dot value and then dot age. Now that's going to be fine to begin with. Let me change this down here, person dot value dot name. So we should see that right here. It works. However, when we come to update it, it's not going to be reactive when we use use signal. It's not going to be able to do that with objects. So if I click on this, we can see now it's not updating this. This one's still working, but now it's not updating that. And that's because when we use use signal, this is only going to be reactive when we're using these simple values, strings, booleans, and numbers, anything like that. But if we need an object or an array, then definitely use use store instead to maintain that reactivity. So let's get rid of those values now like this. All right. And hopefully when we go back to the browser, everything should work again, which it does. Awesome. Okay. So I want to do one more example. I'm going to create some more state using use store again. And this time I'm calling this blogs. So this time it's an array, which is why I've used use store again, because objects and arrays, we use use store. And inside that array, we have three objects where each one of these objects kind of represents a simple blog. Not really, but it has a title and an ID. So I'm going to show you how we can map through this array and output a bit of template for each one. So down here, we need curly braces because we're basically using dynamic code. So much like this is dynamic in curly braces, these different values, we're going to use a JavaScript method here on the blogs. So this thing right here, blogs, and then we're going to map through those. So dot map, because this is an array, remember, we can map through them. And this is pretty much the same way that we tackle this in React, by the way. So if you've used React, then this is going to be very familiar to you. We're going to map through these, fire a function for each one. And for each function, each time we iterate through these, we get access to that individual blog. So I'm going to say blog right here, and then we're going to return some template for each one. So I just want a div for each blog, like so. And it needs a key prop, much like React root elements inside this map method do. So the key is going to be something unique for that particular blog. Luckily, we have an ID which is unique. So we can output the blog.id right here. And then inside the div, let's just output the blog title. So blog title, like so. And now we should see a list of each of the blog titles, which we do. Awesome. Now I'm going to do one more button at the bottom and I'm going to paste this in again, which has an on click event handler. Again, we will talk about event handlers in probably the next lesson. But for now, just know that when we click on this button, we're firing a function and we're taking the blogs and we're using the pop method on that, which means basically take off the last item in the array. Okay. So when we click on this button, it removes a blog. And when that happens and this updates, the template is going to update to reflect that. So let me save it, remove a blog, and we can see the last one goes again and again. Awesome. So this all works. So that, my friends, is how we work with state in Quick. We can either use use signal for simple values or use store for objects and arrays. And we're going to be using state using both of these different hooks as we go through the rest of the series.